Hello there, thanks for coming by PosterCentral.com's video blog today. I'm Pete Howard, and boy, what an early historic Ray Charles concert poster to show you today. Holy cats, 1951, not even fam enough, famous enough to get his picture on the poster, can you believe that? And seemingly almost everybody else did, so that's really funny. But here it is, boy, it's fragile, I have to be real careful, but this cardboard jumbo window card from... Globe posters, see that dance there at the mosque in Richmond, Virginia, March 30th of 1951, and I'm trying to scan here for you, and uh, bottom build down there, look at that, without a picture as I said, that's Low Folson off to the side of his name, Ray Charles, I guess you could say fourth build, it certainly tells you that, doesn't it? So that's pretty funny. So why is Ray, you know, postage stamp American legend and all that, at the bottom, well, obviously, every, every entertainer starts at the bottom, I suppose, but um, as far as falling in Ray Charles' career, the previous month he had had his first ever entry onto the R&B charts as Ray Charles, and that was Baby Let Me Hold Your Hand, which actually went top five for him, but uh, at, the, at the time this poster was made, it wasn't a top five hit yet, it had just entered the chart. So um, that's why he just is kind of, con you know, kind of considered nowhere, I guess, at this point in his career. Um, but he was very young. I mean, it was very early, of course. And, uh, and music historians and Ray Charles superfans will know that two years earlier, he had a top five hit as a member of a group. And that was the Maxim Trio. And that was Confession Blues. And so still on my want list, you better believe, is a Maxim Trio concert poster from 49. But uh, not to be discovered yet. But... Anyway, this is kind of neat because what makes this poster, I guess, unique, I've never seen it before, is this fun numbering system. And see the way the blue banner says Battle of the Band's Five Star Show, right? And they each have this little number by them, and that's so pretty neat. So Ray is number four, and number five is Bill Mitchell. And uh, Long Tall Blues Papa. <laughs> that's, a, that's almost as funny a four-word phrase as um, Boogie Woogie Blind Pianist, huh? Boy, look at that under Ray Charles' name. Boogie Woogie Blind Pianist. Basically not knowing what to call him or how to pigeonhole him yet, but, uh, but that's okay. I'm sure he was happy with that, and his management probably had a say in it. So, um, But there's number four and five down at the bottom. Let's go ahead and get to the headliners of this great show. And as you can see, the headliner is Joe Morris. Now, not exactly a household name, but he was an accomplished um, trumpet player and band leader. And around this time in the early 50s, his was sort of the unofficial house band for Atlantic Records. And uh, there's pictures. As a matter of fact, you can see his trumpet in the blue picture there off to the left. And so there's Joe Morris. Now, he had had a huge hit the previous fall, number one for a month, number one for a month with any time, any place, anywhere. And so, naturally, uh, who sang that hit? Why, little Lori Tate, the number two <laughs> star on the poster. So that's kind of funny. That's stretching the credibility a little bit of, of billing your artists and trying to like oversell what you're really offering. Isn't that kind of like having a uh, Blondie concert poster from the 70s, and then, you know, Blondie's the headliner, and number two build is that Heart of Glass gal, Debbie Harry. <laughs> I mean, it's, a, it's all one and the same. But still, Joe Morris and Laurie Tate, they actually, um, right at the time of this concert, their second hit was just entering the chart, and that would go top five, and that's Don't Take Your Love away from me. So um, they were on a roll, that's for sure, but that was about the, that was their only two hits together and then they would part ways. But I just like that that one two and is, is kind of neat. They might as well have the bass player be the third <laughs> the third star on the poster, but you know, not really. The third star on the poster actually, very accomplished blues legend and oft misspelled Lowell Folson. And sure enough he's spelled with an M on this poster. I've blogged his posters before and remember I think it was Swing Time Records that accidentally misspelled him on one record label and for the rest of his career he was spelled both ways accidentally, but he could cash checks both ways. But it really is F-U-L-S-O-N. Lowell Folson is who the, uh, the, real, the real spelling is. But he was, of course, a blues legend who played a lot with Ray Charles at this point in their careers. And uh, Lowell Folson was enjoying this particular day because it was his last day ever in his 20s. The very next day he, March 31st of 1951, he would turn 30 years old. And of course, as we all know, in the 50s and 60s, 30 years old was considered considered ancient. 
but maybe not so much in the blues world. Um, but uh, that's kind of funny. Is uh, Hopefully they went out and partied that night after the show, right? Now, Folsom, just like Joe Morris and Lurie, um, he had a number one rhythm and blues record the previous year for a month in 1950, and that was Blue Shadows, which was by far, if you're just going by chart success, Lowell Folsom's biggest hit on the R&B charts. And I really like the way, instead of just listing Blue Shadows under his name, it says, the man who sings Blue Shadows, so that's pretty cool. And then it also plugs, as you can see that below that in the next line, Old Time Shuffle Blues, and that was Lowell Folsom's follow-up hit to Blue Shadows, which um, went to, let's see, number three on the charts, so that's pretty cool. And uh, if I haven't uh, played them up too much yet in the video, they got the three pictures, because Ray Charles is not in there, so, but you've got the three pictures from top to bottom, and of course you have Joe Morris, Laurie Tate, and Lowell Folsom right down there toward the bottom and no room for Ray unfortunately or Bill Mitchell but of course it's Ray that we would love to see so um and then up in the venue information printed in very catchy red there it's funny these things were usually known as show and dance but in this case just the giant word dance that's all they give you and so that's obviously what it was and um it's unwieldy at this size a 22 by 28 inch jumbo concert poster from Globe Posters, but I believe you can see off to the left there under dance that advanced tickets were a buck and a half at the door $1.75 and I think it's kinda cool that tickets were available at Slaughter's Hotel and the Globe Record Shop but of course the Globe Rec Record Shop in Richmond, Virginia had no relation at all to Globe Posters in Baltimore which designed and printed up this classic R&B concert poster with Ray Charles, simply known as a boogie-woogie blind pianist. So, love the history behind it, that's for sure. Hope you enjoyed the poster today. Thanks a lot for dropping by, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.